Good morning, everyone. Bonnie Baird here. Uh, hoping you're having a wonderful week. Welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday, June 24th. Today, our service will be taken out of the Book of Alternative Services, beginning to read at page 47. And I invite you to follow along. All readings today will be taken out of the message translation. Page 47. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever will be. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. I invite you to say with me the Jubilati found on page 49. <clears throat> be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. We continue with Psalm 119. <clears throat> this morning, reading verses 121 to 144. I stood up for justice and the right. Don't leave me to the mercy of my oppressors. Take the side of your servant, good God. Don't let the godless take advantage of me. I can't keep my eyes open any longer, waiting for you to keep your promise to set everything right. Let your love dictate how you deal with me. Teach me from your textbook on life. I'm your servant. Help me understand what that means, the inner meaning of your instructions. It's time to act, God. They've made a shambles of your revelation. Yea, saying, God, I love what you command. I love it better than gold and gemstones. Yea, saying, God, I honor everything you t tell me. I despise every deceitful detour. Every word you give me is a miracle word. How could I help but obey? Break open your words, let the light shine out. Let ordinary people see the meaning. Mouth open and panting, I wanted your commands more than anything. Turn my way, look kindly on me, as you always do to those who personally love you. Steady my steps with your word of promise, so nothing malign gets the better of me. Rescue me from the grip of bad men and women, so I can live life your way. Smile on me, your servant. Teach me the right way to live. I cry rivers of tears because no one's living by your book. You are right, and you do right, God. Your decisions are right on target. You rightly instruct us in how to live, ever faithful to you. My rivals nearly did me in. They persistently ignored your commandments. Your promise has been tested through and through, and I, your servant, love it dearly. I'm too young to be important, but I don't forget what you tell me. Your righteousness is eternally right. Your revelation is the only truth. Even though troubles came down on me hard, your commands always gave me delight. The way you tell me to live is always right. Help me to understand it so I can live to the fullest. <clears throat> A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 25. The famous promise God gave Abraham that he and his children would possess the earth was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. 
It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he believed. If those who get what God gives them only get it by doing everything they are told to do and filling out all the right forms properly signed, that eliminates personal trust completely and turns the promise into an ironclad contract. That's not a holy promise. That's a business deal. A contract drawn up by a lawyer with plenty of fine print only makes sure that you are never able to collect. But if there is no contract in the first place, simply a promise, God's promise at that, you can't break it. That's why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God and his way and then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise arrives as pure gift. That's the only way everyone can be sure to get in on it. Those who keep the religious traditions and those who have never heard of them. For Abraham is father of us all. He is not our racial father. That's reading the story backwards. He is our faith father. We call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do, raise the dead to life, with a word make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding not to live on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he became father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say, it's hopeless. This 100-year-old body could never father a child. Nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong ready for God, sure that God would make good on what he had said. That's why it is said, Abraham was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. But it's not just Abraham, it's also us. The same thing gets said about us when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life when the conditions were equally hopeless. The sacrifice Jesus made us fit for God, set us right with God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Before we go on to the gospel reading this morning, just a reflection on that word from Romans. Paul says in there, God's promise arrives as pure gift when we trust God to do what only God can do. It doesn't depend on service or our work. It depends on believing in God. New life, where once there was hopelessness, is the gift. Now I remember holding my son shortly after he was born and looking down into his face and promising him so much, so much. It had nothing to do with what he had done because he was just an infant. The love that I felt welling up inside of me was there in that moment. Only, it only had to do with who he was. He was my child. My hope that day was that he would always know that I had his back no matter what. And that he would grow into all he could become because of that love permeating his life, giving him confidence and sure-footedness in the way ahead. I look at this excerpt from Romans and I see God looking that way at us, holding us, loving us, 
promising to be there in all circumstances, not for anything we've done to deserve it, but for who we are, God's own children. Thinking of my son, who's now a father of his own sons these days, and uh, in this week following Father's Day, and Happy Father's Day belatedly to all of you dads out there. The Gospel reading today is from Matthew, uh, chapter 20, beginning to read at verse 1. Jesus said, God's kingdom is like an estate manager who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. They agreed on a wage of a dollar a day and went to work. Later, about nine o'clock, the manager saw some other men hanging around the town square unemployed. He told them to go to work in his vineyard and he would pay them a fair wage. They went. He did the same thing at noon and again at three o'clock. At five o'clock, he, he went back and found still others standing around. He said, why are you standing around all day doing nothing? They said, because no one has hired us. He told them to go and work in his vineyard. When the day's work was over, the owner of the vineyard instructed his foreman, call the workers in and pay them their wages. Start with the last hired and go on to the first. Those hired at five o'clock came up and were each given a dollar. When those who were hired first saw, first saw that, they assumed they would get far more. But they got the same, each of them one dollar. Taking the do dollar, they groused angrily to the manager, these last workers put in only one easy hour and you just made them equal to us, who slaved all day under a scorching sun. He replied to the one speaking to the rest, for the rest, Friend, I haven't been unfair. We agreed on the wage of a dollar, didn't we? So take it and go. I decided to give to the one who came last the same as you. Can't I do what I want with my own money? Are you going to get stingy because I am generous? Here it is again, the great reversal many of the first ending up last, and the last first. This is the Gospel of Christ. <clears throat> and another brief reflection on this reading. The service group that year was 18 strong in the little church they served in on the edge of Metro. Some had been servers for four years since the group had first started up. One had just started two months before, mentored by the more experienced ones. They were all having great fun together. The Christmas party for the servers was a blast. Lots of pizza, yeah, even at Christmas pizza, and a gift for each one of them, the same gift. No one in that group complained. I don't think they even thought of complaining. just a few words. I invite you to turn to the affirmation of faith, the hero O Israel, found at the top of page 53, and to say it along with me. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first in the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. We continue with a prayer for thanksgiving, found on page 128. Page 128. Let us give thanks to God our Father always and for everything, saying, We thank you, Lord, for the beauty and wonder of creation. We thank you, Lord, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord, 
for our daily food, for our homes and our families and our friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love, we thank you, Lord. For health, strength, and skill to work and for leisure to rest and play, we thank you, Lord. For those who are brave and courageous, especially in this time of pandemic, for those who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For all who pursue peace and justice and truth, we thank you, Lord. Today we give thanks especially for, and we name that in the silence or out loud, for fathers and those who act as fathers. For Reverend Kyle and his family. For all the saints whose lives have reflected the light of Christ, we thank you, Lord. And the collect for today, a prayer for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And another prayer for grace and faith. Lord God, the wellspring of life, pour into our hearts the living water of your grace. By your light, we see light. Increase our faith and grant that we may walk in the brightness of your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us that which pleases him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Have a wonderful day and a good rest of your week, and God bless you. Amen.